background of American history, out of America's flaming past and into your home tonight, blazing a trail of mystery and adventure, Daniel Boone, Indian Scout. <laughs> April 1755, along the forest road, a white horse gallops swiftly, a blur of white against the green, urged on by a young rider whose tricornet hat is jammed down over his club hair, whose military cape streams behind him in the wind. Shortly, the forest path opens into a clearing on the Potomac River. The rider pulls his horse in, canters past the tents of his Britannic Majesty's army, past log cabins and other rude dwellings, drawing rain at last before a house more spacious than the rest. The place is Fredericktown, Virginia. The house is the headquarters of Major General Edward Braddock of His Majesty's army. Leaping from his horse, the young man bounds up the steps of the porch and into the house. Another day, another hour. Think me, I say, Sir Piper. Hello. Who is this? Why, uh, Colonel Washington, as I breathe. General Braddock? Well, Colonel, you at least arrive when you say you will. Far more than I can say for the supplies your fellow Americans promised me. Uh, you know Mr. Franklin, do you? By name only. The name of Benjamin Franklin is notorious in Virginia. <laughs> as you can see, General Braddock, I am not beloved in Virginia. That is because I am from Pennsylvania. Oh, seek me, man. I don't care where you're from. If you can secure me the supplies I'd acquire. I have already promised you the supplies, General. 150 wagons containing loaf sugar, good green tea, chocolate, flour, raisins, and spirits. The question seems to be, how are we to transport them here? Perhaps now that your aide, Colonel Washington, has arrived, he can answer it where I have failed. I can try. What is the problem, General? We need those supplies desperately, Colonel Washington, and quickly. If our advance against the French at Fort Duquesne is not to be slowed. Now, if I understand, Mr. Franklin... These wagons and an equivalent number of horses, uh... Oh, I am right about the horses, am I not, Mr. Franklin? <laughs> well, uh, to transport the wagons without the horses, General, would be a problem I doubt even Colonel Washington could master. Eh? Oh, 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 yes, quite, quite, quite. Uh, well, then, Colonel, these wagons will be assembled at a point near Philadelphia. The fly in the arm is this. Once these wagons leave Philadelphia for Fredericktown, Bozier is bound to hear it. And he and his wolf pack of Indian savages are certain to attack them. The answer seems simple enough, General. I should be happy to lead a detachment. Not and... likely. Oh, think me not likely, Colonel Washington. The colonial promised that my supplies should be delivered to me here. And here they shall be delivered by the colonials. I refuse absolutely to turn a hand in that account. But, General... Enough! I know what you must think, Colonel Washington. That I am being foolishly obstinate, absurdly inflexible. But you, sir, have not been played as I've been these past weeks by the inefficiency of your fellow colonials. They found here nothing but disorder, wilderness... Not a single road fit for military transport. They've been constantly vexed by lack of men, incessantly tormented by the lack of supplies. It was understood, thoroughly understood, that these I should have, that they should be waiting when I landed. Well, sir, they were not waiting when I landed, nor have they an idea despite the promises. No, sir, I have had a bellyful. Mr. Franklin may have the supplies, but I shall not stir one hand to bring them here, nor one foot toward Fort Duquesne until they are brought here. It is a problem for the colonies. And since you are colonials, I leave a solution to you. I hardly know what to say, General. Hello. What's that? Why, uh, there's some excitement below. Perhaps we'd best see. After you, General Braddock. Pio. I say. General Braddock, man. Hmm. Someone bringing in a captive. And a captive Indian at that. Big gad. How long since we've been capturing Red Indian? Look there, General. He's prodding the redskin before him with a barrel of a long rifle. Who is that man? I'll be bound if I know. Captain. General Braddock, sir. Tell that man to come here. Very good, General. Outsold that chap, what? Tall as a... Uh, what are those trees over there? Pine trees, General. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tall as a pine tree. And equally as straight. But what's that monstrosity he's wearing on his head? <laughs> that, uh, that's a coonskin hat, General. You don't say. Oh, monstrous. Here he is, uh, here's the man, General. Ah, oh, good. Now, what is your name, fellow? Boone, General. Daniel Boone. No, Native in these parts, I own. I reckon not, General. I was born in Pennsylvania. I thought as much. You have the look of a Pennsylvanian. What do you mean in this part of the colonies? I'm a wagoner and blacksmith in your army, General. 
How's that again? I said I'm a wagoner and a blacksmith in your army, sir. I don't think I quite understand you, fellow. I assumed you could not be attached to His Majesty's forces inasmuch as I gave express orders less than 48 hours ago that no red savage had come upon was to be taken alive. You're quite sure you're a wagoner in this army? Well, General, a musket ball hits better if it's shot straight. So I always like to get to the point. I am attached to your army, and it seems like I disobeyed orders in not shooting that redskin when I collared him spying on our camp. Spying? It appears like it. He's an <coughs> Onondaga, and Bojo's got about 800 of them up at Fort Duquesne. Well, hmm. you seem knowledgeable as well as reflectory. How is it, fellow, that you come upon a red savage spying upon our camp, and yet against my particular orders, you did not kill him? I guess you might say I like Indians too much, General. You like Indians? Well, yeah, General. They're people, you know, just like you and me. Are they indeed, fellow? I must say... If you'll allow me, General... I must say, sink me if you colonials are not the most influential. General, if you will permit... You will permit me, Colonel! I will handle this matter in my own fashion. You, fellow. General? You will now do what should have been done when first you encountered John the Savage. You will shoot him, sir. That is an order. You mean you want me to shoot that Indian in cold blood? You have heard the order correctly. Obey it. Why, I couldn't do that, General. You will do it, my friend, or enjoy the consequences of your refusal at dawn tomorrow. If you mean you intend to have me shot, General, I reckon that's the way it'll have to be. I've never killed a man that didn't try to kill me first, and I don't aim to start now. Insolence! Captain, seize off this very box. He is to be executed at dawn. His face flushed with burgundy with anger, General Braddock turns and storms into his headquarters, followed by Colonel Washington and Mr. Benjamin Franklin, while Daniel Boone, age 21, a wagoner in his Britannic Majesty's army, and a man who will not obey a heartless order, is led off to the guardhouse. In there. Well, what did they get you in here for, Sonny? Huh? Who are you, old-timer? Don't call me old-timer. Well, don't call me Sonny. You're young enough. You're old enough. Let this signs of execution and no execution. I'm shaving off these whiskers before dawn. Make me look how powerful that older than I am. You're no chicken, Gramps. Whiskers or no whiskers. Now, stop that. Well, you started all it. All right, all right. Leave it be. Who are you? Boone's my name. Daniel Boone. Boone. Daniel. Yeah, I've heard you. Yeah? Sure as my name is Longbow Billy. Longbow Billy? You? Yeah, the same. But well, I thought Longbow Billy was a young man. I am young, dang it. Let's me for an hour and if I don't see these whiskers all poor son of They make me look a lot older than I am. Well, Longbow, young or old, I'm proud to meet up with you. Uh, you can put a double arrow to your string on that one, Sonny. <laughs> Bet your pardon, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Proud to meet up with you, too. Yeah, have some butter candy. Butter candy? Make it myself. Take some butter, pop it in the pan. Add sugar, heat the whole mess, and stir. When it cools off, you got butter candy. Have some. Well, thanks uh, for holding here. Don't be. Got to get rid of it. They're shooting me in the morning. They could have me with a bowstring, and if I'd given any of my butter candy away to them redcoats, let her head to pea brains, to think that tomorrow at dawn they're executing the only man in this old blamed army that's got any brains. Oh, well, now, it's uh, nice of you to say that, Longbow. But... Huh? Well, I mean, uh, I'm not the only man in the army. Yo, but... who's talking about you? I'm talking about me, Longbow Billy. Oh. They catch me laughing, they did. Couldn't help myself. We're standing among some hickory springs, watching this fool redcoats drill in for the battle if they come with the French engine to Fort Decay. There they are, the sun gleaming gold and their helmets, red coats, clay pipe, and every last son of a gun a target a babe could hit, marching up and down, up and down. He off, the captain cries, and they stop. He off, the captain cries again, and with a snap and a slap, their muskets come down to ready. He off again, cries the captain, and they aim. So help me heaven above, by that time they'll be riddled with French bullets and cut to shreds with engine arrows. So I'm laughing fit to kill, when a voice behind me begs to inquire what I'm laughing at. It's the colonel attached to Braddock's staff. That's all, Bob. Here I am. Execution at dawn. Well, we'll eat up this butter candy before that. <coughs> what do you hear, Colonel Washington? Colonel Washington? Yes. Well, Lou? Well, what, Colonel? I thought you'd like to know you'll not be executed in the morning. Well, that gives him a lot more time to eat this butter candy. Have some, Colonel. I beg your pardon. Anyway, don't have anything. Thank you. As I was saying, Boone. Yes, Colonel? Your name earlier this evening during that unfortunate confrontation had a familiar ring to me. I'd heard it somewhere before, though I couldn't exactly say where. It bothered me somewhat. And so I've been making inquiries among the men. I've discovered, Boone, that you enjoy a certain fame as a hunter and Indian scout. The fellows are decidedly lavish in their praise of your ability. They say, in fact, that you're even superior to Longbow Billy, the celebrated frontiersman. That's a lie. Ain't nobody superior to Longbow Billy. I beg your pardon. Excuse me, Colonel, but this is Longbow Billy. This? 
What's the matter with this? I've always thought Longbow Billy was a much younger man. Got the shame off this beat. I just got to do what the time is. Tell me, tell me. Well, interesting, very good. Well, to get on, Boone. The fellows, as I say, were extraordinarily lavish in the praise of your ability. I don't think it was any praise due me, Colonel. I lived most of my life in the woods. I just naturally like to hunt. That's about all there is to it. On the contrary, I'm inclined to think there's a good deal more to it. Be that as it may, Boone, I communicated this information to General Braddock, together with a suggestion that he has seen fit to adopt. I fear that I'm not following your drift, Colonel. You will. Mr. Franklin, I believe you know him. Ben Franklin? Sure. Uh, Mr. Franklin has promised General Braddock that he will assemble 150 wagons loaded with supplies at a point near Philadelphia within 10 days. The problem was how those wagons were to be transported here safely. Bourgeois and his redskins are sure to find out about them and make a very serious attempt to stop and capture them. They sure are. Well, where do I come in, Colonel? I assured General Braddock that if anyone could get those wagons safely through, Daniel Boone could. That's a long shot, sir. Is the try worth your life? My life? At my suggestion, General Braddock has granted you a stay of execution. He will give you a word to make no attempt to escape. If you bring those wagons through, Boone, the order of your execution will be forgotten. Eh, hey, get yourself shot at doing, Dan. It'll be over quickly. Really? Longbow is probably right, Colonel. There isn't a chance of getting those wagons through. I think there is, if you lead them. I don't know. Well, I do. You try leading 150 wagons loaded with supplies to the wilderness from Philadelphia, and you'll wind up with Beaujou's engines boiling you alive. Better to get shot by a firing squad. Nice and neat. I know what I'm talking about. Longbow's right, Colonel. There's no chance at all of getting those wagons through. You've right? got to get them through, Boone. What? I don't know how to say it, but we've got to win against the French at Duquesne. And we can't win without supplies. We need someone like you. Perhaps you won't get through, but, Boone, you've got to try. Eh, yeah, what's the matter to us who wins? All we want, wanted, was to be let alone, hunt and fish, and make a living where we found it in the woods. If the English win, the woods will still be there. If the French win, the way Braddock's drilling his troops, they're sure to win, the woods will still be there. So what's the matter to us? For that matter, what does it matter to me? Eh? I don't know how to explain it. Matters, that's all. Boone, will you do it? On one condition, Colonel. Name it. Longbow Billy goes with me. Yeah. I'm not sure that that can be arranged. It'll have to be, Colonel. I wouldn't figure on a trip like this without somebody I can depend on. I understand. Very well, Boone. Longbow Billy goes with you. What? what? Me? Me? Get boiled and all? Instead of killed nice and eat by a pirate squad? Take it easy, Longbow. Ah. All right, Colonel Washington. We'll try it. I knew I could count on you. You leave in the morning. Good luck. Yeah. Well, what? Looks like we've got ourselves into something. We got ourselves into something? You got me into this. Well, better than a firing squad. I don't know. They mention things too bad by themselves. When they get messed up with the French, giggle water and all that, I don't know. Well, now you're right. Well, Longbow, you don't have to go. It's up to you. What do you say? <laughs> have some butter candy, Dan. <laughs> Danger and plenty of it lies ahead for Daniel Boone and Longbow Billy. Will their skill as woodsmen, their cunning as scouts, bring those wagons and themselves through safely? Thrills and tense adventure await us tomorrow, so be sure to be with us then for the next stirring episode in this saga of American history. So remember... In Cherokee, it's... A finger for Gima! In Sioux, it's... How for Gima! In Pawnee, it's... A cow for and in America, it's Daniel Boone, Indian Scout. Gentlemen, you have just heard the first program of Daniel Boone, Indian Scout. You could have been listening to the hundreds, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> 